So, <clears throat> welcome, guys. Welcome to another episode of IT Information Technology for your ICANN ATS class, or if you are into in the management information system for foundation level, this course is also very useful for you. So what I'm trying to say is that if you are studying IT in your ATS2, this is a read along program. What you just need to do is get your study pack, your IT study pack, and follow the way we read, or I'm reading rather. So you just read along with me and form your own notes. I'll be doing this for every chapter. And the unique thing there is that I'm only going to concentrate on the necessary points. So notwithstanding, if you have your study pack with you, just follow along the way I read and I explain the various uh, points on this study manual. My name is Fadari Ayola. I'm an IT person. I've been in the field for the past 25 years, and I'm also a certified accountant. So right now, this is chapter one. And more interestingly, kindly hit the subscribe button or click on the bell icon just to help your guy in this new, um, am I, how am I going to call it? In this latest and new development in your study. Right now, I'm on chapter one, data and information technology. And under this chapter, as you can see, we'll be talking about the concepts and elements of system theory. We'll be talking broadly more about system theory. I will read the text for you. Then I will explain and break them down so that you have a broader understanding of what system theory is all about. Then go, we will now go to the control systems, data and information, internal and external data information, representation in the computer, and usefulness of information in the accounting environment than the computer system. So I'm not going to go through these objectives. Let's just go straight to the system theory. So if you have your notes, your pen, and um, your jotter, or your notes, here's an opportunity for you to write your own notes. And within the next couple of minutes, we'll be done with the entire chapter one. So without much ado, let us read. It's a read a long program. So what is system theory? Before I read, you need to understand what system is and what theory is. Now let's talk about the system itself. Now, the definition of a system is quite uh, simple and at the same time might be complicated. But look at your entire body system. In medicine, there's what we call the anatomy of the human body system. Now, a system is a combination of different elements. Or let me break it down into our normal lifestyle. A system is a combination of different guys coming together to form a particular pattern. Now, when we talk about the human body system, you have the digestive system. You have the respiratory, respiratory system. You have the all other kind of system that forms the entire human body system. And there are some systems, if they are not working, the body, the human being is in danger. 
You get what I'm saying? So this system, the combination of various systems from left, right, and center coming together to form the human body system. The same thing goes to every aspect of life. So we have a system where one individual can't do it alone. He needs to bring guys along, different people along, different communities along to form a pattern of life. So let us read this introductory uh, ch chapter. Now you said the system theory, introduction. So the system theory provides a spectrum of scientific principles, concepts, and philosophy, which may be applied to the study of system of all types, system of all types. In the concept of this book, it embraces all types. Remember I said different guys. So it embraces all types of business systems, including control system relating to quality control, production control, budgetary control, cost control, financial and cash control. Now, these are the different guys that have to, that needs to come together to form a system. Now, we have guy one called quality control, guy two, production control, guy three, budgetary control, guy four, cost control, guy five, financial, and six, cash control. This, all these control are different guys that came together to form a business system. I hope I'm flowing. So what you can just write here in that a system, uh, the combination of different elements, different individuals that come together to form a pattern of lifestyle. I continue. This system provides the fabric of management information system. M-I-S. Let's go further. And you'll permit me, there are some paragraphs and prob probably some paragraphs that I might skip. I'll just explain them and probably tell you whether it's useful or not useful. It's not everything in the chapter you need to read. I might do some highlighting just to... Uh, give you the point you need to jot down. So it's not everything in the entire text we'll read. I will only concentrate on the useful aspect. So let's continue. A system may be defined. Listen, you can write this now. A system may be defined as the combination of interrelated elements. So those guys... They are interrelated elements, different guys. They are called subsystems, organized in such a way so as to ensure the efficient functioning of the system as a whole. This necessitates a high degree of coordination because once you bring different guys together, you will need some level of coordination to control them. Some might have be, some guys might have odd temperament, some might be introvert, some might be calm, some might not talk, you understand? So you will need some level of coordination to control all this system. Just the same way our human body system performs. I continue. Each of which is designed to achieve a specific purpose. So you can write this. If I'm too fast, you can pause the video, rewind, and write your points. A system element can be a tangible object such as data, information, or an event such, an, such as an anniversary. So examples of system include, as I mentioned earlier, A, business system, B, manufacturing system, C, service system, D, information system, E, computer-based management system, F, stock 
control system. The system must have an objective or a goal. It is probab probable true to say that all systems have more than one objective. So a business organization, for example, might have the following objective. Generate a reasonable financial returns for shareholders, of course. Maintain an high market share, yes, dominating the market. Increase productivity annually. Offer an up-to-date product range of high quality or proven reliability. So you can read through the remaining ones. Let's continue. In most cases, the different objectives, that the different objectives of a system will be conflicting. And I said so earlier on that we have different individuals with different and strange characters. And you as the leader, you will need optimal uh, qualities to be able to manage all of them. So, so that some, some form of compromise or trade-off between them must be reached. A system will not operate as efficiently as it should if these compromises are not reached in a satisfactory manner. For example, the wish to reduce production costs might conflict with any of the following. So that's I measure against health and safety condition at work. The I costs used for the treatment of waste and affluence from production, the quality of goods produced, and spending on new technology as rich it, uh, as spending on new technology or research and development. So the system environment. Now let's look at the environment which the system needs to operate. Now in an environment, you need to understand that when you talk about environment, we talk about the internal environment and the external environment. So when you talk about the human body system, you have the internal human body system and the external parts. The external part is what people can see externally, your skin, your eyeballs, your teeth, uh, probably your teeth might be internal, but depends on how you see it. Your the air, your skin color. People see the exterior of you. We also have the internal, and what is internal stays inwards. That's your digestive system, your kidney, your heart, your livers. Everything has to be inward. So what it means is that what is internal stays internal and what is external stays external. So there's a boundary. There's a boundary that separates the inside from the outside. So when you have a wound, there's a cut. You understand injury steps in and you will need to cover that wound as soon as possible before it turns to something else. So let's read what is system environment. The environment of a system consists of elements which surround the system and interacts with it. The environment is not part of the system. For example, the environment of a business system consists of the government and the competitors. A system is normally delimited, that's differentiated by a boundary. We separate the system from its environment. Anything within the boundary is part of the system, while anything outside the boundary is part of the environment. Elements included in the system and the elements included in the environment depend on the particular problem being studied. For example, considering the problem of determining the turnaround time in batch producing, the system elements will include people 
in the form of speed of data entry operators and the schedule established by the computer operator. On the other hand, if the problem is to study how to make a particular computer program execute more efficiently on a given computer, the system element will include purely technical details of the program, system software routine, the data used and the hardware, why people will be in the system environment. Just as every system has an objective which ought to be identified and specific, so too will every system have constraints or limitating factors which restrict its capacity to achieve its objectives. So, in a business system, constraints restricting the objective of profits maximization might include any of the following. A, scarcity of key resource such as cash or skilled labor. Let me go to D, political and legal restraint. Let me go to E, production completion time. So this, what I've read, you can just pause it, rewind, go through it again and jot your points there. It's not everything we need to read in the entirety. But what you can understand from here is that in a system environment, we have the system environment consists of the element which surrounds the system. As I said earlier, we have the internal and the external environment. So whatever surrounds the system is the environment and that environment influences the system. So you, in, you live in a house, you have a compound, you stay inside the house, you have a compound, your compound is fenced. So whatever, whatever happens within your compound and your house is internal, is within the system. And whatever happens outside your fence is outside the system. I hope I'm able to prove a point there. Okay, so let's continue. Subsystem. Now, subsystem is basically the sub-elements. I don't want to use the word sub. That's the different element, different individu individuals. So those guys I was mentioning, guy one, guy two, guy three, these are the sub-elements. Most of them can do, most of them actually need each other to perform the specific task that is needed. So for instance, in a manufacturing company, we have the production, we have sales, we have um, marketing, we have the engineering, that's technical and engineering units, and I guess you should have maybe the uh, store, inventory, department, or what have we. Hope you understand. Now, if you rely strictly on production, fine. They are the guys that produces the, the product from the raw materials. But after production, the item, the final product needs to be sold. So that's where the other guy in sales and marketing comes in. And when sales and marketing, excuse me, when sales and marketing go to the market to make some sale, you need the account department to keep the records and to prepare an account. And when stocks has fallen low and you need to restock, the guys in the store department are uh, brought in, into the fray. So what I'm trying to say is that all these guys I've mentioned in different departments are subsystem of the entire manufacturing company. So they are all useful. In fact, when one department is not functioning, 
it definitely is going to affect every other. For instance, if the machine breaks down, the engineering and maintenance departments, if they are not working, the company is down. If the account department don't function, how do they raise vouchers, payments, salaries? How do they pay suppliers? So these are the kind of things you need to understand. So I won't dwell too long on the subsystem. Let me just read some points, then we'll move on. Every subsystem can be broken down. Every system can be broken down into subsystem elements. And in turn, each subsystem can be further broken down into sub-subsystems. Separate subsystems interact with each other and responds to each other by means of communication or observation. So, as I said, subsystem might be different from each other. We have function like the manufacturing system. We might have production, finance, marketing, sales, personnel, space. We have northern area, southern area. So that's just it. So let's continue. Let's go on. Let's go on. So let's go to one point one four. Coupling and decoupling. If you are the kind of guy like me who has worked in the computer village for over time, there's a normal language we use then when we are assembling a computer system. We say, ah, guy, I want to go and couple the system. So once you use that terminology, someone in the IT line or in the engineering field understand what you are saying. Now, when you couple, when you talk of coupling, you mean you are assembling, arranging, joining things together. It's called coupling. Even in marriages, when an husband and their wives are joined together in holy matrimony, you call them a couple, which means they have joined together. The same thing, the opposite is decoupling. It means you want to pieces the item or the machine or you want to divorce the marriage. So what coupling and decoupling means is that coupling means arranging, assembling, tightening the knots. Decoupling means you are piecing or separating the various parts of a system. That is integration and disintegration. So a system is a combination of subsystems, you understand that, which are integrated to each other by means of inputs and outputs. Full stop. Coupling is a measure of the degree or extent of the dependence of the subsystem on one another. If subsystems are over integrated, they may become too complex to understand and operate. And if one part of the system ceases to function correctly, the other elements are affected and may cease to function completely. The complaint, both in physical and information sense, allows subsystem more independence in planning and control. When systems are decoupled, it is easier to administer them in some cases as they become less complex and more flexible. This enables them to react to random influences as they occur without too much disruption. Decoupling generally leads to system stability, which is essential for continued operation and the survival in a dynamic environment. The company creates a situation whereby source system exist separately in a functional basis, but are coordinated by chief executive, by the chief executive for the achievement of the overall goal. What you are saying here in this paragraph is that in a coupling and decoupling, 
when you have a system that is coupled, you might eventually end up in a complex system. Bureaucracy might come in. The system might be too complex to the extent that eventually most things might not move very fast the way you want them to move. So when you decouple the system, that's you defragment, you separate the system to individual units and now give those units the freedom to work individually on their own. What the, this chapter is trying to say is that there may be some level of speed and efficiency. And all what you just need in the decoupled environment is where you have the chief executive monitoring all the subsystems, which are the departments, and making sure they all fall in line with the ultimate goal of the company. That's just all what they are saying. So let's go on. Component of a system. When classifying system, distinction is made between a system, system's logical description and physical description. The logical description of a system is a representation that specifies essential system elements irrespective of how these elements may be implemented. The physical description addresses implementation files. For example, in a computer management information system, the term input, processing, and output are logical description of the general transformation process. However, during implementation, keyboard can be used as an input device, while monitor or printer can be used as an output device. The three logical components of a system are input, process, and output. Input, so note this, the three logical components of an input process is of an the three logical components of a system are inputs, process, and output. Input is what? Input this provides the system with what is needed to be able to operate. Input may include ma matter, energy, human, data, or information. Processes, this transforms the input into output. So the process transforms the input into output. Such a task performed by the human, plant, machine. Output has to do with, these are the result of processing. So in the manufacturing system, finished products and work in progress are output elements. So types of system now. We have two types of system. We have the open and closed system. The open and closed system. Now, let's read what the open, let me explain what the open system is. An open system are those which interact with their environment for the collection and exchange of information. Now, see an open system as an extrovert. An extrovert is someone who interacts with people freely, makes friends easily, interacts with the society, and usually when you interact with people in your society freely, you easily get information, you easily mix, and you can easily get help and resources. So that's what the open system also represents. An open system are those which interact with their environment for the collection and exchange of information. Such information includes business transactions with suppliers, customers, the general public, government department, trade organization. Such systems adapt to changes in the environment in order to survive, which requires speedy reaction to competitive situations and other threats in the most effective way. They now said all business systems are open system. So if you are into business, an open system is a system where 
the individual or the characters involved are very flexible. They are open to any situation that comes their way. And if there's a threat or any information that is important, they easily react to such a threat or information, sharp, sharp. So that's an open system. Let's go to a closed system. Obviously, the closed system will be the opposite of the open system. The closed system is an introvert, doesn't relate, he keeps to himself, he stays alone, closes himself up, he bottles up within himself, he hardly makes friends. Now, let's see what a closed system is. A closed system does not interact with its environment, either for the exchange of information or business transactions. Can you see? The closed system has neither an input nor output. It is self-contained. In fact, no such system exists, but the term is used for the system that interacts only partially with the environment. An approximation is the reaction in a sealed or insulated container. So classification of open system. Open system may be classified according to the degree of reaction to their environment in the production of output. We have the deterministic and mechanistic system. We have the probabilistic and stochastic system. And we have the adaptive or cybernetic system. You'll be wondering what are all these terms. You will see them deterministic or mechanistics. From the term, you have an idea of what all these are saying. A deterministic system or mechanistic system is one in which various states or activity follow each other in a completely predictable way. So when it system you can determine the next line of action you can determine the next move you can determine the next step it's there are organized sequences you know what should come out next in the next operation so and usually you find them in the mechanized environment that's why it's called mechanistics so for instance, um, you, you are you're into production. I'm thinking of what any kind of production. You know that they are, they are in stages. And if you don't follow those stages according to the production line, you won't get the final output. So you have to follow each line of production. These are deterministic or mechanistic systems. A deterministic system enables the output generated from specific input to be measured without any error. An example is a computer system. Business and economic systems are not deterministic systems since they are highly unpredictable. Now, probabilistic system, probable, probability, or stochastic system. A probabilistic system or stochastic system is one in which some states or activities can be predicted with varying degree of probability. Varying degree of probability. So which means you are not sure. So it can be neither or either. Either the A or B. Probability. When you want to throw a dice, is it going to give you a six or a one or a three? Probability. So business and economic system are probabilistic system since they are subject to random influences from the environment. The state of such system can therefore be defined or known only within specific limits, even when they are subject to control. For example, stock of raw material, parts and finished goods are influenced by changes in demand and variation in supply. 
Generally, in a probability system, the output of specific, specific inputs are not certain because it is not possible to ascertain what events will occur outside their boundaries. So let's go to adaptive and cybernetic. When you talk of adaptive, you talk of adaptation. You talk of the ability to change when the weather changes or when the situation changes, how you adapt to the situation you find, you, you find yourself. That's adaptive or cybernetic system. So a cybernetic system is defined as a science of communication and control in man and machine system. The term is derived from the Greek word kybernetis. The derivation of the Latin word gubernator, meaning governor or controller. An adaptive system or cybernetic system is one which adapts and reacts to stimulus. The way in which it adapts is uncertain as the same input stimulus to the system will only will not always produce the same output or response. An adaptive system responds to changing situation by adjusting its behavior on a self-organized basis. A guy they adapt. No matter the condition he finds himself, shall adapt. You understand? So the system alters its input as a result of measuring its output. So that's the adaptive system. You can go back and form your points from it. Let's go to the control system. Control. When we talk of control, we talk of um, rules and regulation, principles, uh, ethics. These are the things that form controls. So a control system, if you once you see that topic control, you should have an idea of what your, that is coming, what is coming your way. Already you know what the definition of a system is. So a system must be controlled to keep it steady or enable it to change safely. Control is required because unpredictable disturbance may arise and enter the system so that actual result deviates from the expected objectives. For example, in a business organization, such disturbance could be entry of a powerful and advanced technological, technological new computer into the market and unexpected rise in labor costs, the failure of a supplier to deliver promised raw material and government reg reg legislation. So control systems are often separately structured from the system which they control. For example, the production control system controls the production quantity. The quality control system controls the production quality. The cost control system controls the cost of production. These control systems are basically administrative system for monitoring the results and modifying the state of the physical system to which they relate, so administrative. Control is for the purpose of detecting variations in the behavior of a system so that control signals can be communicated to the appropriate managers for necessary adjustments or changes to be made. So elements of control, the basic elements Number one, we we'll talk of planning. This is, the, this is the determination of objective or parameters such as standard time of an operation, level of production activity. You can read it. Planning, collecting facts. This involves the collection and recording of data in respect of such things as actual time taken, level of production achieved, level of sales achieved. Then comparison. This involves the computation of the difference 
between the objective and the actual results of the purpose of indicating variances and the reporting of significant variances. Then corrective actions. This involves the action taken by the relevant manager to maintain a steady state. Now, close and open loop control system. We have the closed system and the open system, which we've read about. Now, we have what is called the loop control system, and we have the closed loop control system, and we have the open loop control system. They are quite different from the one we've read earlier on. The basic type of control, this has to do with control. The basic type of control system are open and closed loop control system. So let's talk about the open loop control system. An open loop control system, the control is exercised regardless of the output produced by the system. Here, control is exercised by external intervention. Physical examples include automatic light switches and traffic lights. That's open loop control system. It has to do with that. It also has to do with external intervention, but it's based on control. Closed loop control system. In a closed loop control system, the control is exercised by parts of the output is fed back into the system as inputs. Many closed loop systems are self-regulating as they contain a built-in controlled mechanism. Business systems contain integrated control system, performing continuous monitoring activities, which are also closed loop system because they contain the essential elements of feedback. So we have the feedback control system. Business information is needed to plan or make rules. It is also needed to compare error signals to be generated as a basis for adjusting the input to a system, which in respect of an automatic control system is achieved by an inbuilt mechanism. So, this is a prototype of what a feedback system looks like. We have the open, uh, sorry, we have the input system. We have the process. We have the output. The same output can be used as a feedback. So if you are giving the, if you are giving a question that what is a feedback system, you can draw this diagram. It's called the comparison of actual and planned performance. You can draw this diagram. After drawing this diagram, you can now explain that the input aspect has to do with information or data that comes into the system, which the processing unit processes the data and outputs information. That same information can also be fed back into the system as raw data. So you draw this. So draw this in your notes also, this diagram. So closed loop control system. So negative feedback. Obviously, negative feedback, when you talk of negative feedback, these are the feedback that you don't really want to hear that are not palatable for your business. Negative feedback are feedback that could be injurious or not effective for your business line. Let's read. Feedback is negative feedback. Feedback is part of the outward, which is returned to the input as a means of system control. When the actual output from a system is lower than the desired output, the differences between the actual and the desired output are detected as 
positive deviation. Errors. An action is effected in the opposite direction to counteract them. Considering, consider a, a production line with 10,000 units as required output in a month. If the actual monthly output is 9,000 units, then monthly error is 1,000 units of 1,000 units are detected as positive deviation. Corrective action would then be taken to increase the output of 10,000 units per month. This is an adjustment in the opposite direction to the error. Most business control systems are negative feedback systems. What negative system feedback system is? A scenario where you borrowed somebody 5,000 Naira and it tells you at the end of the month, is going to collect his money. And at the end of the month, the guy pays you 3,500. That is not the kind of feedback you were expecting at the initial, because your agreement is you give me back my 5,000. Now the guy is giving you 35. So what is it now? Why are you paying me less than what I've borrowed you? So that's a negative feedback. The 1,500 Naira extra, which is meant to be paid to you, can now be used as a feedback in, imputed back into the system, which probably the guy pays some days or months later. That is what negative system feedback is all about. While the negative feedback is obviously the opposite of negative. In a positive feedback control system, actions are taken to enlarge, amplify the detected deviation. This is, an, this is in contrast to what happens in a negative feedback control system. For example, amplification applies to serve mechanism, whereby a small manual force is detected and amplified to achieve a defined purpose. Feed forward control system. Let's read that. Management can also act proactively in a feed forward principle. Here, the error signal deviation are noted over a period of time by a monitoring process and may be employed to forecast the projected performance of an organizational unit. This approach ensures that the historical trend or inherent behavior of a system is allowed for when establishing control parameters for future operation. In conclusion, feed forward control monitors both process operation and inputs in an attempt to predict potential deviation in order that adjustment can be made to avert problem before they occur. Nature of data and information. So let me explain data and information so that it will not be easy for you to write your notes and form your jottings. Data are raw facts or raw evidence. They are raw, which means you got them naturally from your research. For instance, you sent some guys outside to do a market survey on a particular product. That market survey, it's a raw data because once your guys get outside, they interview some number of people, maybe 20 people out of 20 people, how many people actually enjoys our product? So out of 20, you have 12. Then probably five don't enjoy it. Then the remaining three, they are on the fence. So what you now do is that you take that raw data and you process it. You process the information, which means the number of people who like your product, these are raw facts. Those who don't like your product and those 
who are sitting on the fence, who are neutral to the product. So these are raw data. You will need this information, this data. Once this data is processed to information, you will need this information in later production or future production to improve what has been done previously. So data are raw facts, events, numbers, and transactions, which have been collected, one, recorded, two, stored, but not yet processed. Data consists of numbers and characters, alphabet and special symbols, which are used to recall facts and events about activities occurring in an environment. Can you see? Information is processed data. It is obtained after subjecting data to a series of processing operations, which convert related groups of data, raw facts, into meaningful and inherent form. Processing could be in a form of addition, subtractors, comparison, sorting, and rearrangements. So that's just it. Let me read this part. Information must be communicated and re received by a manager who uses it for decision making. On most occasions, what is information to one manager might be data needed for that processing to another manager. I stop there. So you can go through this table. I won't have to, we won't have time to go through this table. So let's continue. Data conversion processes. The conversion of data to information is represented diagrammatically up here. So this data, data is raw and unchanged fact. Information is an organized and sorted fact. So when they ask you in the examination, the distinction between data and information, these are your table. Number two, it serves as input into the computer system. Information is served as output from the computer system. Data observation and recording are done to produce data. Information analysis of data are done to obtain, obtain information. Data is the lowest level of knowledge. Information is the second level of knowledge. Data by itself is not significant. Information is significant. So we have a diagram also here, which talks about the data and information, especially in a computer system. The, just the same way you saw the diagram earlier on, here we have a computer which serves as an input device. Then we have the data processing, which has to do with your central processing unit and your storage device. Then the output of information. And as you can see from the diagram here, we have data, raw data, or formatted information generally has no context. Information processed material, formatted information, data given context. So this is another diagram for you to draw and understand what data and information is all about. So general characteristics of information, you can read this, but from all what we have read, you should be able to understand the characteristics of data and characteristics of information. From here, you said, A, it must be detailed enough to allow for effective decision. B, it must contain an appropriate level of details for the recipient. It must relate to the current situation and have acceptable level of integrity. So you can read them all, all and form your notes on it. So type of information, we talk of quantitative information. When you talk of quantitative information, you are talking of something that has figures, quantity. It has figures, numbers, and uh, units or um, a measure of quantity, either in kilograms, meters, percentage, uh, units in general. 
So that is what quantitative information. So when you talk of quantitative information, it has to do with figures, numbers, and the quantity they represent. So then when you talk of qualitative, qualitative has to do with explanation. It has nothing to do with numbers and figures, but it has to do with explanation or description to describe. So when you talk of qualitative, we talk of probably the kind of color used in painting the design or the design of a park, which has quality material. But when you talk of quantitative, you talk of how many numbers of units or quantity of an item. That is what quantitative and qualitative is all about. Values of information. This is the perception of the receiver of a message or report which is of great importance for the information specialist. It has to do with the change in the in behavior or the action of the user, less the cost of production or generating the information. The message being sent as information has different meaning to different people, that is, the message being sent as information, as information, can be interpreted differently. Information have three meanings. What the sender intends to send, what is actually contained in the message, what meaning the receiver understood from the message. So how to provide the value of information. The information specialist can enhance the perception of the receiver in the following way. Avoid information technical jargons. Regulate feedback from receiver to sender. Gain the confidence of the receiver. Avoid excessive details. Reduce noise to the barest minimum. Information system. Let's talk about information system. So we know what information is. Is the product of a process data. And the system are the different elements that come together to perform a function. So obviously, information system has to do with a process data that is outputted. But the system of outputting process data as information to the general public for their understandability. That's my own definition. Let's read what I can definition is. With the proper definition of data, information, and the attributes of information given above, as you know, we can now define information system as the distinct, as distinct from information. An information system is a set of interconnected procedures. Can you see? The purpose of which is to provide managers at all levels and in all functions of an organization with the information necessary to enable them make timely and effective decision. Information system can also be defined as a combination or collection of people, hardware, software, communication network, data resources that collect, transform, and provide information to managers at all levels in all function to allow timely, timely and effective decision making in an organization. Oh, what are all these? Just look at it that the combination, as I said, a system, combination of different elements. What are these elements? We have people, hardware, software, communication, network, and data resources. All these guys come together to make the dissemination of information, which you've already processed from your raw data to disseminate to the general public. So that's just it. So these decisions are for planning, directing, and control of all activities for which they are responsible. The common characteristics of all information systems, you can read that, the existence of producers or NGOs, read that. So let's go to accounting information system. What is an accounting information system? 
Now, to digress a little, this text is useful for both IT for ATS classes and for the foundation class in the professional from MIS. That's the IT aspect of your management information system. So either of any of you guys can form your notes from this read along and you not you will not regret what you are doing. Accounting information system, a special type of information system for accounting professionals is the accounting information system. An accounting information system therefore consists of people, procedures, and information technology. Just as we have above, the accounting information system performs three important functions in any organization. It collects and stores data about activities and transactions so that the organization can review what has happened. It processes data into information that is useful for making decisions and enables management to plan. It provides adequate control to safeguard the organization's assets. It helps in analyzing information presented in payroll, stock, list of debtors. So subsystem of an accounting information system. Most business organizations engage in many similar repetitive transaction. This transaction type can be grouped into the five basic cycles, which constitute the basic subsystem in the EIS. So you see that the expenditure subsystem cycle, which consists of the activities involved in buying and paying for goods. We have the production subsystem. We have the human resource payroll subsystem. We have the revenue subsystem the financing subsystem. The above subsystem suggests the most important work activities performed by professional accountants, accounting system and financial reporting. So you can go through this long-term strategic planning, internal consulting, short-term budgeting, process improvement, computer system and operations. So we read the benefits of information system. Their benefits, operational efficiency, functional effectiveness, provisions of better improved service, better product selection, competitive advantage. Disadvantage of information system. You have the ease of fraud. Yes, most of you, some con men, or some fraudsters must have they've used technology to wipe out your account simply by sending you links or giving you a, a false information which allows you enter your vital bank information online. So these are the disadvantages of information system: ease of fraud, data loss, garbage in, garbage out effect, gigo effect. Information can be deceptive sometimes, statistical information. So we'll now talk of rules of information in the accounting environment. A, it identifies activities required for action. For example, a cost report with a huge variance might stimulate investigation and possible corrective action. Information enables decision-making process of the accountant to be faster. It makes the accountant output to be accurate. It enables effective planning and control desirable in the accounting profession. Information is needed in the accounting profession to proactively respond to rapidly changing conditions in the environment. So these are points you can portraits and read further on. Information technology. In the def definition of information technology or information system above, no reference was made by any form of mechanization. 
it is the definition of how information is used rather than how it is being obtained. But in information technology, processes is carried out with the assistance of machines, electronic machine. IT is a computer-based information system in which the computer system plays a major role. All the various aspects of electronic technology include the use of microcomputers for the processing and storage of information, the application of electronic spreadsheets for the modeling of business problems, the use of electronic mail, emails for transmitting messages. So when we talk of information technology, we talk of the mechanism the machines use in processing information. That is what information technology is all about. Types of decision. One major objective of accounting information system is to provide the information for management decision making. Decision can be categorized either in terms of degree of structure that exists or by the scope of the decision. A, decision structure. Decision vary in terms of the degree to which they are structured among which are highly structured decisions. They are repetitive routine and understood well enough that they can be delegated to lower level employees and in, in fact, such decision can be automated. For example, the decision to grant credit to establish customer requires the following. Personal identification number, credit card limits, current balance. Semi-structured decisions are characterized by incomplete rules for making the decisions. There is need for subjective assessment and judgment to supplement formal data analysis. Such decision can be made using computer-based decision aid, such as decision support system, executive support system. For example, setting a marketing budget for a new product requires the marketing status of other products, the level of advertising, and other subjective decisions. Unstructured decisions are non recurring and non routine. For examples, include choosing a cover for a magazine, hiring a senior manager, the choice of basic research project to undertake. So, decision scope. When we talk of a scope, we talk of the size of an area, the limit to which it can go beyond. That is what scope is talking about. So decision scope are one, operational controls, management control, strategic planning. What is operational control? It's concerned with the effective and efficient performance of specific tables. Lower level supervisors and employer face semi-structured or structured decisions involving operational control. Examples include decisions relating to inventory, stock management, and extended credit. Management control is concerned with the effective and efficient use of resources for accomplishing, accomplishing organizational objectives. Middle managers deal with semi-structured decisions involving management control. For example, budgeting, developing human resource practice, deciding research projects and product improvement and management control system. Strategic planning is concerned with establishing organizational objectives and policies for accomplishing those objectives. Top management faces on structured and semi-structured decision involving strategic issues. Is example, setting financial and accounting policy developing new product line and acquiring new businesses. Data representation in a computer. There are two types of data, namely characters and numbers. So a character is an alphabet or special number such as punctuation marks. 
For example, the character sets include 26 uppercase alphabets, 26 lowercase alphabets, a punctuation mark such as full stop, semicolon, colon, special characters like your hashtag, asterisk, plus and minus. So now we have the external and internal data representation. So external data, these are the representation of data in a usual normal language of the user. For example, the use of English alphabet to represent characters. When documents are presented for coding and processing, the data in the document is an external representation for the computer. Internal data representation, physical devices such as store and process data in computer are two state devices as we have in punch card magnetic devices. So let's continue. Let me look for other points that are necessary. So let's talk about bits, BIT. These two symbols, zeros and one, represent binary digits. Base two numbers, numerals, such as each of which are called a bit, zeros and one. Thus, a bit is the smallest unit of data in a computer system. A string of bits is then used to code data in a computer. The number of bits in each string will determine, depend on the technology, the architecture of the computer involved. For instance, a two-bit computer, each character is represented by two bits, either 00, 01, 10, Thus, the maximum number of characters that can be processed by a two-bit computer is four. That is two raised to power two. Let's continue. We have a three-bit data also. That's 000, 001, 10, 010. Three-bit data. That's two raised to power three. That's eight. We have a four bit data, two raised to power four. So you read all that. We don't need to bother ourselves with some other things here. So we have bytes also. In a normal practice, a byte is defined as consisting of eight bits. One byte is equal to eight bits. This is standard definition of a byte. Is a representation of the character, which could be an alphabet, digit, or special character. A character is made of eight bits. A word is defined as a combination of two bytes. One word is equal to two bytes. In information technology, two raised to the power 10 is equal to 1024, which is called a kilo. For easy calculation, one kilo is taken as 10 raised to power 3, which, a which is a close approximation to 2 raised to power 10. We now have, we now present higher dimensions of bytes. So 1000 bytes is equal to 10 raised to power 3 bytes, which is equal to 1 kilobyte equals to 1 KB. So you read the remaining items there. 10 raised to the power 3 kilobyte, that's 1 megabyte, 1 MB. 10 raised to the power 3 gigabyte is 1 terabyte, 1 TB. So data train and data stream, you read those ones. Let's continue. So we have the representation of integers. Decimal integers are also represented in the computer in a binary form as a strings of bits. A number in binary form is said to be in base two, giving a binary equivalent of a data, character or numbers. The leftmost bits, leftmost bit is called the most significant bit, while the rightmost bit is called the least significant bit. So, for example, in 100, 
the leftmost bit one is the most significant bit, while the rightmost bit, which is the zero, is the least significant bit. Conversion of decimal numbers to binary numbers and vice versa is done automatically by the computer. So you see an illustration. We won't be able to go through that. I will need to create a separate tutorial on how to calculate binary numbers or do binary operations. So with that, I will stop there and watch out for my next lecture so that I will treat the binary operation in a separate video for all our understanding. So with this, I want to appreciate every one of you. Kindly subscribe, click the like button and share so that I'll be able to do more videos in future. Thank you very much and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.